And we're live. And we're live. Nick, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How you doing, Mike? Man, I'm doing really good. I've been excited about this conversation all <laughs> week, man. And uh, I know you're going to drop some value today. Um, you know, I, I I think, you know, probably the hottest thing going right now, you know, as you as you troll through the news feed and Facebook oh, yeah. and Instagram is video, right, man? And so right. what I'm hoping you can do today is uh, is really drop some knowledge on these uh, these agents who, you know, are tuning in to, to really learn more about how to leverage video in their business and social media. And, right. um, and you know, we can start off by talking kind of about the evolution of marketing, right, in, in, in – right. um, in, in in real estate, and you know, it started out with phone calls, and then emails, and then <laughs> and then and then text messaging, and then social media, and, and now everybody's on video. So, you know, I'm I'm going to kind of let you take it over from there to to help these folks stand out in their marketing. Right. Well, I mean, I think a good way to put it is why everything's been switching over to video, because like you said, it started with text messaging, phone call, well, phone calls, text messaging, yeah, social media, and then really diving into video. So, I mean, like a quick fun fact, too, is um, so there's this guy five years ago who said he wouldn't be surprised if Facebook was doing all you see on Facebook is videos, right? Yeah. So that, that set was said about three years ago, and he said in five years it was going to happen. That person who said that was the owner of Facebook. Zuckerberg said in five years video is going to take over Facebook. Yeah. I don't know about you, but if the owner of a company tells me something, that means it's going to happen. When did he come out with that? Right when he was starting to come out with these Facebook Lives. And as everybody on here who just joined us, all 10 of us see, right when you go live, you get that notification, right? Right. So there are some key factors that are showing us exactly why video is going to be taking over the industry here. So some, some other quick things. So let, let's say, Mike, you're, you're new to a city. And yep. you're looking around with your buddy. What restaurant are we going to go to? The first place, it has some written reviews. You might see like a picture or two. And you're like, okay. So then you go to the second place. You have a lot more pictures. You have a lot of written reviews. But then this third place, a video showing you exactly what's going on in the restaurant, kind of like the ambiance that's going. has some music beside it as well. And then it also has, at the end, some video testimonials of people saying how much they like that place. Mm -hmm. Which place are you going to choose? Dude, I mean, it, I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, we know the power and impact video can have, right? I'm, I'm going, I'm going to the restaurant with video reviews. Yeah, exactly. Taking, it's really capturing everything that is about video. It's really capturing everything that has to come along with the power of that video, of that place. So let, let's take this into the same way as uh, so let's say you're you're online, you're an online buyer, which everybody's an online buyer, buyer nowadays. Right. Everybody's looking for their places online. They're telling their agent, let's go look at this place. So so again, you have your first place. It has a couple pictures of the house. Nothing too special. The next place kind of has like a bunch of 25. The last place has a video of the all around and it's taking you on a tour. It's set with the music. So it's two houses are better than the third house. That third house, it sets the mood. So if you're not shooting videos, chances are you're going to get left behind. Because whether you like it or not, people choose the video. Why? Because it's easier and most people are lazy. They don't want to have to click through each video. If all I have to do is click play and watch, golden. Yeah. 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 And you know what I'm seeing now, man, is like, we, and I talked a little bit about this when we started is that, um, you know, now when you screw when you scroll through the newsfeed in Facebook, um, right. I mean, like every third post is, is a video now. And so <laughs> right. and, and, or at least with the people that are in my newsfeed. But I, I guess what I would ask you, man, is like right. seeing as though all these people are posting video. Right. Well, before I go there. Let's okay. talk a little bit about those people who are watching that are maybe reluctant to start video and then how to get <laughs> them to start, man. So, right. like, because I think people, it, so talk about some of the, the challenges people have starting videos with the whole, you know, limiting belief that they look terrible on video right. or, they, or it has to be perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, so especially, I think one of the limiting beliefs is it has to be perfect. Another one is the quality of your video. Most people say, I don't have the top of the line video equipment. I don't have a $3,000 camera. I don't have the lighting of a studio. I don't have the backdrop that you need. And those are all limiting beliefs because I'll tell you what, maybe when video was first start coming around, when you had a flip phone, when it determined whether you had a flip phone video or an actual camera, 
that might have to be into the equation just a little bit as far as like the quality of it. But now we all have these great things, which I'm actually going live from today, is phones. We all have something that can shoot quality video that you can upload anywhere. So I think one of the first limiting beliefs that you have to get through is exactly what you're shooting from. You don't have to have a studio. You don't have to have anything. You'll get any one of my videos, and I do this almost for a point. I have, I have some great cameras. I have some other things, but every single one of my videos is shot from this tool right here, the phone. Yeah. So there's some other things that we do as well. So that's something with, within our content. Some lean free stuff from being on this call. But in our content strategy report, what we go over is what you need to do to have a mobile video studio. All you need to do is have a tripod, a Bluetooth mic, and your phone. It costs you under 100 bucks, and you're going to have a mobile video studio anywhere you go. So if you say it can't be done, go look at any one of my videos. They're all shot on that exact thing right there. Yeah. So that's one of the first limiting beliefs. Go ahead. Talk about like, I mean, like you personally, talk about like your first video, man. Can you remember back? Can you remember being scared to do your first video? Or did you just do it? Tell you what, dude, I'll tell you what, it took me weeks to shoot my first video. It really is because just last Friday I posted, uh, I shared a, my very first video that I had. So I shared my very first video that I had. I was taking a look at it and seeing how far along I've come. So my first video, yeah, it took me weeks to do it. So the whole purpose behind shooting my first video is I was just like everybody else that was on Facebook. You know, everybody has those motivational quotes to start the day yeah. or like something motivational. You see that all the time and a lot of people are doing it. It's no knock on it because I love doing it. I still do it in my time because I'm going to shoot video which we're going to get to in a second of actually having everything planned. But yeah. I still do it. On my Mondays, on my Mondays and Wednesdays are my kind of like motivational, here's a picture with my quote. On my Tuesdays and Thursdays are my video. But there was just a couple of days when I'm typing things out, I'm like, I can't get the emotion that I want to get across in each one of these. I can't get my full story across just through the text, just through mm -hmm. what I'm saying on here. So that's what inspired me to do my first video. Okay. But yeah, it took me weeks. And the reason being was, man, I need to get a haircut first. Or I looked down like, yeah, I don't think I'm wearing the right shirt. And in reality, nobody cares. Man, yeah. I'll tell you what, it's, it's kind of like, so what I compared it to before is like for people who've gone on the high dive. I think that's something that a lot of us have done, right? Yeah. So it's like when you're looking at the high dive, you're looking up, you might climb up at first because you're seeing everyone else have fun, but you're like, nope, 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 I'm coming back down. You might go all the way up and walk out to the end and you look down. You're like, nope, nope, nope. And you got the walk of shame all the way back down. But when you finally jump off, you hit the water, the first thing you do is swim over as fast as you can to the side, and then you're on the high dive all day. Yeah. The same thing with video. After you shoot your first video, after you go live, that fear is gone. And you realize there wasn't really anything to be afraid of all along. That's a great analogy, man. And, you know, like for me, like the first time I started doing video, I was scared too, man. And especially to jump on like an interview, you know what I mean? Because I bet <laughs> then you're talking directly to somebody else and you, and you, you don't, you know, you want to, obviously you're afraid you might know what to say, but you know, what's great about it is like when you start not thinking of it as video and that you're just having a conversation with another human being, exactly. it just starts to click, man. And it just yeah. starts to work. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I completely agree because we're talking to you. And a lot of times that's a great way to start is just interviews, having things go along this way. Maybe someone who's a little more experienced, just banking off them. Borrow their authority. Borrow the platform they already have. I know sometimes it's uh, – one of my fears too is what if nobody liked it? And it's kind of getting over that fear of what if nobody liked it. I'll tell you what, like some of my first videos, I'd be sitting there on my phone laying in bed waiting for someone to like it, like refresh, refresh. <laughs> refresh i think we all do it at some points like somebody yeah. like it right when somebody likes it or comments you go right away and you're like thank you so much but it, it's it's kind of getting over that fear of just getting over that fear of if, if somebody doesn't like it or somebody doesn't like what you're putting out chances are you're not going to want to work with them in the first place yeah so it yeah. kind of like limits that and i'll tell you what you never know who will reach out to you from video i'm on here today why because of the videos I, I mean, if I wasn't shooting all those videos and posting the content, chances are I wouldn't be on here talking about videos and content. And I'll tell you what, too, something that got me ahead personally, at first when I started doing videos, I was so much um, trying to 
do I kind of do that? I had to recreate the wheel. Like, I don't know what was going through my head. Like, I'm the first one to start shooting video. Yeah. And I started going to some of these masterminds as well. And kind of banking off some of the knowledge of other people who've already done it. And then started doing my research of like Billy Jean is a great example of somebody who is at Yeah. And just learning what they're doing and figuring out, guys, there's a system for this. There's a reason some videos work and there's a reason some videos don't. So as far as that goes, I went through a lot of struggles figuring out what system works when in reality, once I started learning from others, taking shortcuts, and in this business, shortcuts are great. If somebody's already done it, just model it. Yeah. So what so on that note as well, there was somewhere I was going with that that I completely forgot. Well, I got a question for you while you think about that. I'm I'm curious to to everybody who's watching, comment on the side whether you're doing video or not. Um, yeah. and, and, and I want to know, I want to know what you're saying to people who are not doing video, um, that, and here's my thought, man. My thought is if you're not at least doing video right now, you're going to get left behind, man, because yeah. they, and, and so I would start doing at least something, man, because if you, yeah. if you don't, um, you, you're, you're likely to fall out and, and, and be left way behind. So. My, th- my question to you then, for those uh, uh, who comment that they're not doing video, how right. do they, those people who are scared or just not doing, what would you recommend that they start with? Give me, give me something. Give me a quick, a quick tip on something to start with. Yeah. So here's a very easy one to start with. So number one, what I would say is download the content strategy report. My brother put it on there, nickkernpasky.com. It gives you a step-by-step process of what you need to start shooting videos for beginners. So what we realize is not everybody has the resources to start shooting video with a complete team. So as a beginner, here's what you need, a tripod, your phone, Bluetooth. What do you need to do to make a great video? There's three things. You entertain, so you get you get someone to stop scrolling. I feel like that's kind of like what you do at the beginning. You're like, what's up, everybody? We're great. We're getting their attention right away. Yeah. You entertain, educate, then execute. So we're going to go over a bunch of different strategies within that content strategy report. And then on top of that, we also put together, we have a couple of free video guide scripts in there. And then you also have other 27 other video scripts, which I put together because I was sitting I was sitting in the office with Al Stasic. I think you know Al. Yeah. So I, know. I was sitting there with Al. I'm in the office with Al. We're sitting there and we're, we, we had the same conversation. Why aren't more people shooting video? And he turned to me and said, he's like, well, most people don't know what to do. And they don't know what to say. So they feel like they want to be confident and they don't really know what to do going into this. Like, where do I start? So what I did personally with KNL Advisors, what we did was put together 27 different video scripts for any agent to implement in their business today. So within these video scripts, what I do is five reasons to work with an expert. I give you the intro that you need. Like, hi, my name is blank with so-and-so company. And today I'm going to go over the five reasons you need to work with an expert. I give you the five reasons closing out. What we also do is we tell you who to interview. A lot of times, this is why we call them video guides, is because I'll tell you to go interview a title rep. So then you walk them through, you ask them some basic questions about title, and then you educate the public. You go through and you you interview a builder. You interview uh, somebody who owns a restaurant because you don't want to always just make it about real estate, Mm. which we're going to get to here too, about building your brand. But you interview a mortgage lender. You interview – there's a lot of different people you can interview – and I know something that um, the Chase team started, uh, the Chase Stasic team started doing as well, is sending out the video texts. And just after you get a buyer nurture or a seller nurture, there's just simple video texts. Just letting them, know, letting them know, hey, I just talked to you on the phone. My name is Nick. I've been in real estate for X amount of years. I've helped a lot of people just like you find their dream home. When yeah. you're ready, give me a call at blank, and I look forward to hearing from you. So what did you just do? You just personalized yourself. And the best part about video is you shoot it once and it runs 24-7. So, guys, you don't have to go live like we do. It's kind of stepping stones. Going live at first can be a little bit scary and intimidating because you don't get to redo. You don't get to, you don't get to go back and fix a couple of things and do yeah. edits. Guys, so it's just like shooting a video, it runs 24-7. You shoot one video and just put it on your page, it's going to run all day, all along. Yeah. And so I think um, Tiffany, Tiffany Welsh actually put a, a, a note up on the side here that says, just not sure what to talk about to engage people. And uh, I, what I would say to that, Tiffany, is that um, 
you already know what to say. The reality of it is you already know what to say. You have a special skill. You have something yeah. that you do in your in your uh, your line of work that you do as good or better than anybody else. And so what I would say to that is just talk about that or, you know, you have restaurants you love. So to Nick's point, yes. uh, I do this too, man. I'm interviewing restaurant owners. I want to, I want to let them tell their story. Right. And when you let right. you interview restaurant owners or coffee shop owners or stuff like that, um, not only do you let them or give them a platform to tell their story, but guess who's going to refer business to you for the rest of their life. Right. So what do you think? What do you no, think? You're hundred percent right. What do you think so, about? Oh, you I am. No, I'm in full support of that. And the reason being 97% of the market is not ready to buy right now. 3% is. So what most agents do and what, I mean, this is what almost everybody is taught. Get more leads. We need more leads. When in reality, you have about 5,000, 10,000 agents sticking their hand in the same barrel, which is only 3% of the market. So if you're solely focused on how can I get a lead today, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. There are 97% of the people out there who aren't ready to buy right now, who might be ready to buy in the future, or chances are they know somebody who's ready to buy right now. So if you're only, if you're only interested in shooting real estate videos, you're going to be at a loss there too, which is why, like you were saying, just becoming a community champion, which is really what k &L Advisors, the company that I started, this is what it was all based around. I was talking with Steve Freeman, a good friend of mine now in Atlanta, and he was saying, if you own the mind share, you own the market share. Mm -hmm. And that really hit home to me because if people think about you first in the community, not just about the real estate realm, but think about you first as like the community champion, who is the one going out and interviewing the people in the restaurants, who's interviewing these different builders, who's interviewing different people involved in the community, school district reps, uh, people involved in the mayor's office. And chances are, you know someone in all these places. It's just figuring out what to do or what to say. So yeah. that's why we created the viral video guide to kind of help you guys get to that next step and be like, okay, I'm going in there. I'm asking these five questions. And you got a video. So now anytime somebody thinks, if somebody's thinking about Cleveland, Ohio, that's why Al Stacy created his podcast. This is CLE Live. He's owning that mind share in Cleveland. He's interviewing different people who are involved in so many different marketplaces not just real estate. So now if people say think Cleveland, they think Al Stacy. Yeah. Talk about here's one thing that I want to I want to mention too and that Okay. So for for those of you who are new into real estate especially listen to what I'm about to say is that video creates instant credibility and influence. So for those of you who haven't sold a lot of homes, if you get on video, you're creating yeah. instant influence, instant credibility. What, tell me why, tell me why video <laughs> has a big impact on what people think about you. No, that, that is a great point that you just made there. And reason being, so the human mind, they can't tell the difference between TV, the computer, the phone, or anything along those lines. Like anything they see on the screen, they see as the same. So your mind, when they see somebody on video in front of the camera, you hold the same affinity with that person as somebody else that's on TV. So when they see you on there, you're instantly an authority figure to them. Something else that's really good, especially for new agents. Um, so when you're going in, so when you're talking about something on video, you have all the time in the world to prepare the perfect thing to say. Mm -hmm. So when they watch that video, they're going to get the perfect pitch. No matter if I'm watching at 5 a.m. or if it's 6 p.m. on a Friday, I'm out to drink with my buddies, you know, still working and you're still showing you're an authority. They still view you as that authority figure because your pitch is perfect every time. You don't have to go, you don't have to um, go into an appointment and nail it the same way. They already see you as that authority. So I think it's big because again, it's going 24 seven. I'll get likes and comments on my stuff. People are engaging at four, like 3 a.m. Sometimes my video is still running. So it kind of gives you that authority that if somebody asks you about something, you could share a video to them. But yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I have a great video that I can share with you. Hey, Nick, man, is there anything people should not do on video other than the uh, obvious that we won't talk about? So, I mean, I feel like it's that same thing. You don't, you don't argue or bring up in conversation, just race, religion, and politics. Stay away from those three. Okay. No matter what, uh, it's, I would definitely stay away from those three. If you want to bring it up, it kind of narrows your audience, but I would, that's something I would stay away from. 
Um, as far as staying away from that's a great question. What do you think about? Man, I don't have anything. About, what do you think okay, about like go. listing videos now? Like, how, how are people? What, what do you recommend for like people doing listing videos and it, without doing right. like the same boring thing on walking through a house and being like, "Here's the kitchen." I mean, how do you how do you stand out in a, in a crowd now? That's okay. So I'm glad that's a good thing to bring up. So something that um that Michael Meyer in our office is absolutely crushing with that. With his listing, well, he's actually a lender. So what he does on some of his videos, like when he's trying to show a house or an open house, let's say they had a hot tub. So he's sitting there in the hot tub talking about the house. Like, hey, we had this great hot tub. We have all these different things around the house. So right there, you're standing out. The mm -hmm. whole point of social media, stand on social media or not you, but in general, what people don't understand on social media is we're not just, we're not just competing with the next realtor. We're competing with my sister. We're competing with somebody in my family who just got a new job, and I'm scrolling by that. So on social media, there's a whole new ball game. So if you're not getting people to stop the scroll, like you were just saying, if it's just a boring old real estate video, a lot of people are going to get out and then go to the next one. So some things that they're doing, get a prop. So sometimes people have like a giant key. So they have like a giant key like opening the house or um, their giant key just talking to their customer, talking about the home they just sold. But that will get me to completely stop the scroll. Get some music going in your posts. So it doesn't have to be anything blaring, but just have some music in the background. Generally, if there's music, I'm going to stop and at least engage with the video a little bit. So different ways to engage. I know the apps video, but if you're just shooting like a video when you're talking about five reasons to work with somebody or five reasons to work with me, look up the 10 most interesting places in your city. They're the most interesting. People are going to stop and take a look just because they like where that's at. So, so if I'm the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it's a great view of Cleveland. They got one of those Cleveland signs. Even if I'm shooting a video talking about nothing at all, people are going to stop and just take a look at one of the most interesting places in Cleveland. So that's something where you, if, you're not, if you don't think you're the most interesting person in the world, get an interesting environment going for you. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I like that a lot, man. So um... – I, I, I guess I, with, with, with video, like, are, are there any, do you recommend like, and I don't want to, I don't want to overcomplicate it for anybody, especially <laughs> yeah, go ahead. using video, but are, are, are there any tools or, or uh, apps that you recommend um, for editing or anything like that for more advanced users? So for more, can, for me, that was super simple for me to use. Um, there's just a couple different, as far as like yeah, editing uh -huh. goes, What's up? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Camtasia. So that's C A M T A. So I believe you're allowed up to two okay. users on it as well. It's super simple to use. Um, it's just like something I used back in back in high school when I was going through some of those classes. That's what it reminded me of. So even if you're not as advanced, having something as simple as iMovie or just like a simple editing tool where you can crop the front end or crop the back end or split it up can be enough for some of these more basic users. But if you are using something more advanced, I would definitely recommend Camtasia. It's what I've been using the entire time. It's what I've stuck with. And that's, I know my brother has tried a bunch of different tools and Camtasia was the one that we stuck with. Okay. And, and, and so I would, I would assume that you would recommend now with video, um, all social media, uh, websites, right? Yeah. Emails, like you're sending yeah. You know, in, 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 in pretty much anywhere you can get it, right? Yeah. No, yeah, anywhere that you can get it. So I believe there is a stat, I think it was HubSpot stat, said anywhere from say if you have video just in the subject of the email. So for everybody that's using these drip campaigns, if you say you can't get engagement, you just can't get people to engage, include video in the email and you get a 7 to 15% open rate higher when it comes to video text messaging. So a little bit of my background is I was running a call center for about like two and a half, three years. So with that, as we noticed, anywhere somebody was more well-known, whether it's social media or using video, the answer rate was better. Our appointment setting rate was better. Everything was easier. Because let me ask you this, Mike, if you were on the phone with somebody, let's say, do you still do cold calling? I'm not too sure if you do personally. Yeah, yeah, we, we cold oh, call. You do? Yeah, we're predicated on it, man. So if people know you guys and already know you from something that you're doing, how much easier is it to talk to them? 
Yeah. I mean, if I call somebody and I say I'm Tom Brady, they know Tom Brady, right? They're probably going to take an appointment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's that much easier. And that's why we started realizing, man, that's what our company is all about, is helping you guys build a brand. So that way, when you call somebody, you say, heck, out. I was just talking to someone the other day. I think they were out. out back. They turned around like, hey, you're the video girl, aren't you? That's what we're trying to accomplish. Not just the people are ready to buy right now, which is great. But just building that brand around you and building that market awareness of who you are, what community you serve, and really putting the community on the pedestal. Yeah. So you're talking like, I mean, this is getting deep right here. So this is, yeah. we're, we're talking about nurturing leads with video, right? I mean. Yeah. And, oh, and, my gosh. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you guys have a special, I mean, do you have anything you recommend for like, because I mean. I mean, I guess you could, especially if you were in a community, right? Like, let's say, yeah. um, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, right? And so you're interviewing top, you know, uh, our okay. restaurant owners, coffee shop owners, and you can nurture, you can nurture leads with those videos. They don't even have anything to do with real estate, but they're still no. giving you credibility, right? Exactly. And then something else you guys can do is take your whole database of past buyers or like past sellers or past buyers to nurture. Don't as a CSV. Upload into like the business for Facebook, like Facebook business pages. You can yeah. upload that as a custom audience because you already have all their information. You can download it as a CSV and then you start targeting all those people that have already consumed your content that you've already worked with. And all of a sudden those videos that you just shot, you can target those groups. So now it's based, it's a way of nurturing your database, nurturing your nurture. It's like, uh, keeps bringing in your content or keeps, uh, they keep, wow, I can't think of the word right now. They keep consuming your content. There it is. They keep consuming your content. You just add them to your list. So now you're not just, you're not just clicking everybody. What is that? That doesn't work. And people stop boosting. It's because they pick too vague of an audience. So if I pick too big, vague of an audience, someone's going to see my video one time, like throughout the month, and they're going to boost it. And the whole point of doing this is to make impressions. So how many impressions can you make on somebody? How many times can they see that video? So when I boost my video to a specific audience, you're going to see my video five, six, seven times within that month. And it's just because you're within a, such a smaller group. See, like, the whole powerful is back before people started using social media, and this is a little bit before my time, but before social media became the main way of doing this, people would use billboards, spend thousands of dollars on billboards just to make an impression. Yeah. About billboards is you drive by them so quick, you don't even get to read it all. At least with this, it's going to be right in front of your screen. People have spent thousands of dollars on commercials and all these things, not to get business right now, a lot of times, just to make that impression. And now we have a tool that allows us to make those impressions and make them over and over and over in a handheld device every single, like, I think it's like nine hours a day. Somebody's, or some, there's some crazy stats about how long people are on their. For it, to make those impressions over and over and over right on our handheld device. Yep. Hey, any recommendations on how long videos should be? Uh, I think it's a minute and a half to two minutes is like the magic number. Okay. So a minute and a half to two minutes. And that that's yeah. where that's really where you're capturing your audience's attention. That's like your sweet spot. Yeah. I mean, these lives are obviously different when you're going like interviews or you're going long form. So they are different. But as far as like your generic videos, if you're doing like a listening video or even you know, should like keep it to like a minute and a half to two minutes. Okay. All right. And um, is there anything that I, that I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, that's a, that is a great question. <laughs> so I think, I think we covered this for the most part as, as far as what we, like what myself and can all advisors has done, which is the company. I stopped working for the call. Absolute social media. Yeah. What if, to have that authority in your marketplace. Because like I said, even when we were making calls for people, if they already knew them, and if they didn't know them, the results were astounding what the difference was. So what we're is make that next step. How do you start shooting video? What do you need to say? We created a whole viral video script for that. Uh, if you need, just like the coaching, just like this, if you have specific questions about what to do and what to say as well. If you want the complete done for you solution, we have, have that one, then having a chat bot set up on the back end, bringing it over to YouTube, creating a podcast all over one of these lives. 
Yeah. So we have a solution for how to make yourself the community champion. So with that being said, I, I, everyone always asks us, so what kind of leads can you provide us? We are not a lead providing company. We do not provide you leads. That is not what we're here for. What we're here for is to make you the community champion and hold that mind share within a community. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I would add to that is, and in, in everybody who's watching, um, you need to remember that uh, when you create video, you're creating content and you need to leverage that content. Um, and so when, when we create video now, we're having it all transcribed and we're having it, we're, we're, it, we're creating a blog post from it and on optimizing yep. for SEO. So, you know, just remember that that video you can leverage over several different platforms. Um, you know, be it lead generation, right? Uh, on your lead generation platform, your email drips, um, your blog post, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, LinkedIn. I mean, you name it. Like right. we're, we're, we create a video, like we're blasting that stuff out, man. And we're making right. sure that consumers are able to, to, to get what they need. And so, you know, I, I'll just leave you with that, man. But let me let me ask you this, and, and then uh, and then I'll, I'll I'll let you go. But uh, what I want to I want to know, like, um, is is if people have questions about video, um, they don't know where to start, man. They're just looking for you know for, for some way to 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 to, to just do one video. They just they just want to do yeah. one. Um, and 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 so, how do they get a hold of you, man? Like, would you prefer email, social media? I mean, what what would you prefer? So best way to do it. Um... You can just go to my name, nickcrimpassy.com, and you'll see one of the pages that we created as well. But you'll see five different places that says get in my calendar, schedule a call, schedule a call. Click on one of those. It'll take you right to my calendar. You schedule a three, free 30 minutes. Do it. You can go to my Facebook page. You'll see my link on there. Basically, you go to any one of my pages that goes directly to my link, and there's a place to get in my calendar. And one other thing I want to leave you off on, which is something that I just recently figured out as well. So something, um, as far as like, which video do I boost? Which one do I want to put out there? Of course, forming one. So just, so just test it out organically. See which one of your videos organically, like just putting it on your regular personal page, does the best, gets the most engagement. So that way you'd be like, okay, people naturally like this video. Now I'm going to start boosting this video to my target audience. So that way it's an, it's a, you know, is this one going to get people to engage? boost it to that specific audience like we were just talking about your past buyers your past sellers and now you can boost the video that everybody is always already engaging with yeah um man one thing i just thought of is in in you know some, some of your clients obviously are not uh comfortable being on video but if you can get video testimonials um and we talked a little bit about this at the beginning of the call um Dude, that is so powerful. That is so yeah. powerful. If you can get video testimonials with your clients, and certainly you want to clear that with them first to make sure that they're comfortable yeah. with giving you a video testimonial. But I'm telling you, just like you talked about with the restaurant, right? Which restaurant am I choosing? If I've got if I've got customer or clients that are giving my uh, my team myself a video testimonial, and we're pumping that out into the marketplace, right. specifically, right? If you're generating leads online and you can filter leads by city by price range, right? And get your clients to talk about that, and then and then and then you can. It's not a shotgun approach anymore. It's a yep. laser focused video into the perfect audience, right? Yeah, that's so powerful. So yep. just remember, the next time you're sitting at a closing, have a conversation with your with your buyer who's closing on a property in an area that you like or want to focus on growing your business, and see if they'd be willing to even jump on something like this, right? Where you're not, you don't even have to be in front of them. You're just interviewing them about the home buying experience. A minute and a half, yeah. two minutes tops, right? Talk about yeah. their experience. And then, and then you get that out to the audience so that they can consume it so that people will continue to do business with you and it just builds on itself. Yeah, a couple of things with that. I'm very glad that you brought that up as well. Because, well, number one, if you don't know what to ask them in questions, we actually have that part of our free section in the viral video guide. You just go to my website and it gives you the free video testimonial guide. So we'll give you what questions do I ask them? How do I present myself? And there's a couple of questions that you should ask them and then wrap it up by giving people your link. And the second one about this as well, make sure you do this before the closing and contracts and everything's done. People will be less likely to do that because they're free and clear. They're off doing their own thing. Do it while you still kind of have them under contract where everything's basically done and signed up. Do it before then because then they're going to be, number one, they're going to be more willing to say how great you are. And number two, they're going to be more willing to do it because you're still working with them. 
it's a lot harder to reach out to someone after a week after everything's gone by to yeah. sit down and schedule a time. And it doesn't make as much sense. Do it while you're still in the process. Well, they still have that emotion and feeling of how much you actually help them. So that way, then again, add it to like your, uh, your listing criteria or your buyer's criteria yeah. at the end, before you wrap it up, have that in your checkbox, shoot a video testimonial, or at least ask them to shoot a video testimonial. So you start getting in a rhythm. Even if you don't use this, maybe you don't like this video testimonial right now, put it in a vault. You might use it later, even if you, and then later on, even if you use just one line from it, I know there's videos where, geez, we're working with Jay Kinder and his vault. He has like years on years on years on years of video. And now we're able to utilize it. And now we're using all of that. So you never know when you're going to use a video. Even if you don't post it, shoot a video and keep it in your back pocket. You'll get more confident and you'll start getting those steps and be like, okay, I'm getting better at this. And you might just use a snippet of a video later on. You never know. Absolute goal, brother. Listen, I so appreciate it, man. Um, uh, yep. I, I hope our audience has enjoyed uh, what you've had to say, man. And, and hopefully they will reach out to you and connect with you. And um, yeah. certainly, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me as well. And, and I can share with you yeah. how we use video in our business. Um, I, uh, Nick, you're welcome anytime, brother. Uh, and and I, I appreciate you, dude. It's, it's, uh, it's always a good time, man. Yeah, no, it definitely is always a good time. I thank you for having me on here, Mike. Uh, like I said, before you even asked me to come on here, I'm like, I love the lives you're doing. I love what you got going on, how you're incorporating everywhere in the community. It's, it's just well-rounded and you're crushing it, man. All right, brother. All right. We'll see you guys. Peace.